This is part one of two of a SOLIDWORKS tutorial showing FEA simulation by using a brake rotor from the SOLIDWORKS SAE tutorial. The video will cover the setup and running of a thermal analysis as well as the post-processing of these results. The final results of this study can be seen here. This visual represents the temperature distribution on the rotor after a braking situation was simulated. The first step in using simulation is to open a new file or open an existing file that you want to run FEA analysis on. Once open, select Tools, Add-ins, and check the box next to SOLIDWORKS Simulation. This will launch the add-in and a simulation tab will appear in the Command Manager. To create a new study, select the drop-down under the Study Advisor and click New Study. Give the study a name and select Thermal as the type. Once created, right-click the name of the study and select Properties. Select Transient and enter the total time, which in this case is 3 seconds. The transient analysis is used because this case looks at the temperature distribution over a given time period. The next step is to make sure material is applied to all of the parts. Material can be applied individually to parts or to all of the parts by right-clicking the Parts folder under the study and then selecting apply material to all. Once material is applied, the boundary conditions can then be added to the study. For this study, a convection load will be applied. This is done by right-clicking thermal loads under the study or by selecting the drop-down in the command manager and then selecting convection. Choose select all exposed faces. The convection coefficient can be determined by experimentation or through a CFD analysis using flow simulation. For this case, the convection coefficient is 90 watts per meter squared times Kelvin, and the bulk ambient temperature is 293 Kelvin. A time curve can be set up for the convection coefficient by selecting the time curve icon and clicking edit. The first column represents the time period in the study, and the second column is the factor which the convection coefficient is multiplied by. For this study, the convection coefficient is constant throughout the entire study. The arrows that are displayed can be hidden by right-clicking the load and selecting Hide. Next, a thermal load needs to be added for the heat power. This is the heat that is being transferred through the brake pads into the brake rotor. This value can be calculated knowing the kinetic energy of the car, which then can be divided by the time it takes the car to stop. This will give the total heat power of the car. However, only one pad is being analyzed, so the heat power on the rotor is a factor of that total. In this instance, the heat power is 6,660 watts. Add a new thermal load and select heat power. Select the four faces of the rotor that the brake pad will touch and enter 6,660 watts for the heat power. Just like the case was in the previous thermal load, a time curve can be added if the heat power were to be removed or changed in intensity during the study. Before being able to run the study, the initial temperature has to be set. This is done by right-clicking the thermal load under the study and selecting temperature. Select the initial temperature and then choose the entire assembly from the flyout feature manager. For this case, the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. One of the final steps is to create the mesh for the study. The mesh breaks down the entire model into smaller elements to be analyzed. Right-click Mesh under the Simulation Study and select Create Mesh. For the rotor, a curvature-based mesh is most appropriate and can be set under mesh parameters. Any of these parameters can be changed based on how precise the study will be. However, the more elements that there are in the study, the longer the study will take to run. Once the mesh is created, the study can now be run by selecting Run under the Simulation tab. Once the study has been run, the temperature distribution will be shown on the rotor. The units as well as the type of plot can be changed by right-clicking the Thermal Result plot and selecting Edit Definition. Further processing can be done, such as using the Probe tool and viewing the temperature of one area over the entire time frame. This is done by going under Plot Tools, selecting the Probe tool, and choosing a point on the rotor. The Response icon under Report Options can be selected to show the temperature change for that one point during the study. 
In part 2 of this video, this study will be used in a static study to determine if the brake pad will warp during the braking.